Y'all ain't gonna hear me talking. Y'all don't want nobody hear that. I, sm I taught myself how to smoke weed. You know, I, I trained myself how to smoke weed. I taught myself how to do it. Y'all ain't saying that. And, 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 and then Carol, the night I got saved, I went to, I, I went to church with a, with a nickel bag in my pocket because my sister wanted to go to Shambox Revival. And, and mama said she couldn't go by herself because she wanted to go on the bus. And she said, Nita, please go with me. I said, I ain't going on Revival. She said, Nita, please, because mama said, I can't go if you don't go. I said, I, I ain't going. She said, well, what you want? I said, give me $10. And I said, give me $10 in 20 minutes, and I'll go with you. And she gave me $10. I went up there and got me some cigarettes and a nickel bag. Got in the backyard, rolled all my joints, and said, let's go. Yeah, we on the bus stop, and I'm, don't, don't be in church all night. You come on out, don't be standing to the prayer line and go. Ain't go to church to get saved. That's why I keep trying to tell people all the time. Y'all always tell me, honey, God saved me. And my life was a mi my life wasn't no miserable life of sin. I had a wonderful life of sin. I enjoyed all my sin. I wasn't depressed when he called me. I was happy. Okay. I was happy in unrighteousness. I ain't feel like killing myself till I got into church. I ain't get suicidal till I got over here with, with, with folk that, that was trying to drive me crazy. I was so happy, because whatever was wrong, I just go and smoke a joint. Mama said I had to go to church, then Friday I saved a little couple joints. Got on in the backyard and smoked a joint and went on to Sunday school. I was an obedient drug addict. Okay, yeah. Look, I had it down like a science. And I had a whole lot of hair way down my back. And I wanted a big old afro. And all week long, I would wear it this big. I'm not playing. I got pictures to prove it. But Friday night, Wednesday night service, Sunday service. Mom said, you got to braid that hair down. So I went on the backyard, smoked a joint, and put four plaits. Went on the Wednesday night service. Next morning, got up, picked it all out, back wild again. I had a wonderful life of sin. Wonderful life. <laughs> Love weed and wine coolers. And you and you and you, and listen, you you smoke that weed and drink that wine cooler and go and buy some McDonald's and smoke a cigarette after McDonald's. That's the best Salem light in the world. I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't, I wasn't mad when I got saved. I was not mad when I got saved. And I went to church that night, big old afro sitting in the back of the church. Went outside and got high, and I got my laugh on, because you know, when you get high and people be doing stuff, it just kills you. You all over the back row, just out and laugh. So wasn't nobody with us, because it was just me and my sister. And so, you know, she got knocked out on the power, and, I, and I, that just really made me mad because I knew then she was going to be out for a while speaking in tongues. And I, you know, because she was just going to go through the prayer line, you know, because Shambach, when he prayed for you, you know, give you a hard hit. And some people, they hold you up, and you just kind of stagger, and you come on through it. She fell all out. And the saint was telling me, honey, she in a deep place in God. And I was like, you know what? I'm ready to go home. There's 2,000 people in the place. He praying for everybody. And because she all went to his college and stuff, she was like on the third row. So you know, everybody was still being prayed for and she was out. So I said, I'm gonna go on, on out here on the sidewalk, and finish my joint, smoke my cigarettes, and wait till she come on out, out of this thing. And I went on up the block, smoking my weed. And I was standing on the side of the curb. And I heard somebody say, if you come and come now. And I thought, I, I said, okay, I'm... <laughs> this must be some bad weed. I'm hearing voices. Cause you know, you can get a bad batch, make you hallucinate a little bit. They leave too much formaldehyde in there, to, you know. You know I mean? <laughs> Take that weed home and soak it in vodka, it didn't mess you up. Being dried up and lighted, watch what happened. You'd be crazy. 
hearing stuff, seeing stuff, knocking stuff all off your shoulder. Fanning flies and little flies around. And I said, I'm hearing stuff. Say it again, if you come and come now. And I just kept on smoking. And then I heard this bit of a Lord say, Juanita, I'm calling you now. And if you coming with me, you better come now. I'm still, Carol, I'm still crying. <laughs> if you come and come. <laughs> Drop my weed on the ground. I ain't have nobody out there tearing with me. Right. I ain't have nobody out there saying, you ought to give your life to Jesus. Right. He called me. Right. Right. I threw my cigarettes in the gutter that night. I threw my reefer down. I didn't go back in the church. I stayed outside on the sidewalk. My sister came out. We got on the bus and went home. I went in my room and went to bed. I got up the next morning, came in the kitchen. My mother took one look at me and said, you got saved last night. So don't tell me, look, 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 look. When righteousness really comes in, you look different, you sound different. You become a changed person. Okay, y'all don't, let me just make this real plain. You don't want to do it. The very taste of it leave your mouth. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. Why is it that we got drug addicts now that's getting saved, Dr. Johnson? They're on hard drugs, shooting crack cocaine and all that stuff. And they come to the altar and get saved and get delivered right then and there. And you got the saints sitting up in here. Can't stop cussing. Can't stop being mean. Can't stop lying and talking about people. What do you mean you can't help it? You're not saved. Cause are you telling me that the power of God can dry crack out of somebody's veins and they can't stop a liar? I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me right there. Are you telling me that God's anointed can dry up, oh God, drugs out of somebody's veins and they don't want to shoot drugs no more and you can't keep your mouth shut from talking too much? Okay, I'm going to tell you what's going on here. Okay. It's the, it's the righteous versus the religion. Because let me tell you what's happening. And this is what's killing me right here. People have been in church for years, 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 years. And you got people coming in off the streets. Coming to the altar. Getting delivered. Slain out of the spirit. Knocked out of the power. Got notebooks of stuff that they done wrote. But God's talking to them in the middle of the night. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And they got power with God and only been in church five minutes. And we sitting in church all these years and ain't got no power and didn't want to sit them down. And tell them, you going too fast, baby. No, you going too slow. No, you in here playing church. No, 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 you been in here so long because you don't know where God brought me from. Cause I'm a crack at it. Don't tell me to slow down. I'm an ex-prostitute. Don't tell me to slow down. Cause I ain't got time to slow down. You don't hear what I'm saying? I gotta run for my life. I don't have time to join the choir and join the glee club. I ain't got time to be a, a part of your group and your sect. I'm running for my life. I just came out of an abusive relationship. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying? I just got free in my mind from a lesbian relationship. No, I don't have time to slow down. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I said, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Because I'm looking around this room right now at too many people that the Lord done brought out. I know he's a power that can bring you out. You don't hear what I'm saying to you. I said, I know he's a power that can bring you out. You got a crack addict right here and a drug addict right here. You don't hear what I'm saying. Oh, God have mercy. Somebody that used to live on the streets right here. Somebody that used to lay behind garbage cans living in the streets and now look at Tisha's life. Don't tell me what God can't do. Don't tell me you can't bring your body on 
around. Don't tell me you can't get up out of the bed with somebody that's not your husband and not your wife. The devil is alive. Y'all sit down so I can read this and we're going home. We're going home because you're looking at me funny now. I mean, being delivered from a lion spirit is an easy thing. Just shut up. Y'all ain't hearing me. Being delivered from a gossiping devil is an easy thing. Just get out of the company of. Got people that shot drugs for 20 years. Hey, y'all ain't saying nothing. Got somebody who mama and daddy died from drugs and AIDS and, 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 and come from a family of drugs and alcoholics and prostitutes and did everything. Can you imagine what she battles with in her mind? And God can't get you to live safe for one week? I ain't studying you. You don't want to be saved. You ain't met the real Christ. Because the real Christ tells you to shut up and you shut up. The real Christ comes with obedience. This anointing called righteousness, it comes with obedience. It comes with yes to God and no to the devil. You ain't got to wrestle. Y'all ain't hearing me when I talk in here tonight. It ain't no battle. It's just no. Because I'm the righteous. It's just, okay, I'm gonna hear, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something real powerful. It's a decision. Okay, I'm gonna say something. Let me just, let me just get out of this curse. Cause I gotta preach tomorrow night live on TV and I, I'm just up here like I ain't got to do nothing. Uh, he said, he said, Carol, he said from the, why should you be stricken and punished anymore since it brings no correction? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart is faint, feeble, sick, and nauseated. From the sole of the foot even to the head, there is no soundness or health in the nation's body. But wounds and bruises and fresh and bleeding stripes, they have not been pressed out and closed up, or bound up, or softened with oil. No one has troubled to seek a remedy. Okay. No one has troubled to seek a remedy, because all these symptoms is in the church. We can't help the nation, because we can't help ourselves. I'm going to show you who we are. The eighth verse. And the daughter of Zion, Jerusalem, is left like a deserted booth in a vineyard, like a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, like a besieged city spared, but in the midst of desolation. Except the Lord of hosts had left us a very small remnant of survivors. Do I have any survivors in the house? Okay. Okay. <laughs> There it is right there. That's who got the remedy. That's who got the answer. Not the religious, but the survivors. That's why, oh God, I love you tonight, Jesus. That's why there's some stuff you had to go through. That's why there's some stuff you got to go through right now. Because God got to make you be the person that has the answer. And he said that the person that has the remedy is the survivors. Except God left us a remnant of survivors. You know what I want you to do? I just want you right quick to turn around and tell three people, I survived it. They ain't even got to know what you're talking about. <laughs> turn around and tell three more people, the devil should have took me out, but I survived it.
But all I can tell you that I know people that died. I know people that had a nervous breakdown. I know people that's in the crazy house. I know people that committed suicide. But you're looking at a survivor. And the reason why God let me survive is because I'm somebody's answer. Take me out. 